Uh, hello, this is a note on the use of the program QTVLM for doing weather routing. It's part of a series of articles and short video clips we're doing on the use of GRIB files uh, in numerical weather predictions. And I'm going to put this link up here. Oh, that's not the right link. Uh, this is the link up here. I'll put that to this article. And then this is the instructions are written out as a text document here. And I'm basically going through those steps one by one with a video to show how it works. And um, that's the way that is. And also, so um, the, the program is a very versatile program for showing grid files or for navigation and very, various other things. And we will have more videos on this. Um, and uh, I should say, I am also, I should say I'm very new to this program, this wonderful program, just learning its many features. Uh, and so I may not be doing the optimum routing in the optimum way. And so I'll just stand by for comments or, you know, corrections and and we'll redo it as we need to as we learn more about it. But right now, just go through the basics. Uh, we're, uh, and we'll just do a, a little short section here, a little short section to see how the process works. Other places we're doing a more, uh, and we'll publish it, a uh, more in-depth study of, of comparing various routes and details. Right now, just the very basics. So the basic, we probably start out with loading a GRIB file. And, I, and this program has wonderful resources here for just defining a box and say load the GRIB file from, you know, from the GFS or various other models, uh, a lot of European models and, uh, and so forth. But uh, this is winter time. It's February here in Seattle. And we can't look at re current data to get anything realistic about what it's like to sail across this ocean here. So we've got some archive data we're going to use. So instead of instead of attaching somebody's server here to get the data, we'll get the data from our, from our, that we've loaded from other sources and we'll just load it here. Now, how you get the data does not matter for what we're doing now. So to get that, here's one way to do it. Now, this, oh, you see, well, we see immediately, I'm clicking GRIB. This, this program will load three GRIB files simultaneously. Uh, you could have like wind in one of them and uh, currents, ocean currents, uh, maybe RTOFs or something. And then the third one, you can have waves, maybe WW3 model or something. And, and the German, he's got links here to the German sources, um, uh, Deutsche Wetterdienst, and they have a lot of this data as well. So there's different sources. You, so you could load that. Or you could, you could start inland, start inland and have one, one grip slot be a high resolution a high resolution model and then as you as you then reach out into the ocean you switch over to the ocean model which is in slot 2 and then the, uh, the program will automatically take the uh, data with the highest resolution and blend that all together automatically but for now we just go to grip 1 and see here's where you request it from Zygrib and whatever these places are you could also get one from um, sale it'll create a sale docs email request for you Okay, but I'm just going to open this, and then here's the one we want to use. It's a reanalyze the GFS data from uh, July 2010, and it's uh, July 4th, 2010, and it's a uh, and uh, uh, for 20 days or so. Well, no, excuse me, it'd be 16 days. That's the limit of the GFS. So what's it telling me? So the first thing I know is last GRIB date is before the current date. Okay, so these programs are used to you working with real data. And if you download a real GRIB file, it's going to be three or four hours old. So you're never going to have that, you know, the newest. The newest you can get GRIB data is three or four hours. Uh, so it's, you're never going to have this problem. But we are way... Um, this is way back in time. So click the clock up here, this clock item, and let's set the machine up the up to the here's the present time. Seven twenty no, seven that's a grib file data that's hard. So let's just open up page one, the first the first map, say okay. And so there's the grib data that we're going to be working with. And then uh, oops, I just clicked a button uh, with my finger. Uh, now I'm doing them. I'm rolling this with the mouse, so forth. Now, if you ever kind of get off like this or something, you can click this button here, and that should center it right on that. This is an optional uh, slider that you can turn on and off to step through the data, you know. Or you can always go to individual one, individual pages right here. Okay, uh, that this is uh, you can toggle on and off. Okay, so there's the grib file. Now the next thing we need for routing 
is we need a polar diagram. Uh, so let's go to boat. And again, the steps are listed in a boat. Now here's a, here's a kind of a semi-tricky thing if you're starting from scratch, right? Here's boat and then here's polars. So it'd be tempted to go right down there. But that's not quite right because that's for once you have a polar, that's where you go and analyze it, edit it, fix it, things like that. What we want to do is go boat settings and then down here go to polar. And now we want to uh, import a polar. And then this one we're going to use, um, let's see, what do I have here? This is not, uh, uh, oh, I should have, uh, routes, polars. Okay, this one. I want to use this. What this is, we're going to do a Cal 40. And this is a Cal 40. Now, what this strange notation I'll show here. This is a Cal 40 I exported from Expedition, which has totally the wrong format for the polar files in Expedition have totally wrong format for this program. So then I convert it to the so-called polar format, which is here, and then uh, uh, and then this in um, a CSV format, CSV. So that's what this is. And we have, uh, and then I say, OK. And so that's got the polar. By the way, in this article here, uh, there's a link. OK, somewhere in here, there's a link to a place, to an article we've got that discusses the various types of polar, the various file formats for polars. OK, so we've got the polar diagram. I think that's all we need to do on this page. What we might do is safe thing is go to the boat. Now let's come down here and look at this wind analysis. And there is a, now that's showing just one wind. 20 knots and this says if you know you can go around here and if you read over here you can see what the data is for 20 knots or a big overview you can click and look at everything and if you look at this data and this is in fact what we're using because this is what I started with and done other things with but if you look at this you say this is polar is not right you know either either this point is wrong or this point is wrong these are actually optimum data from one boat that was put into the polar without really balancing it out. So you could fix this, and, and uh, you could fix that. I'm not going to now, but to fix that, you would go boat, polars, uh, um, editor, editor. And then here, you can just go and change this or add a new column or fi figure out the one you want and just literally change these numbers. Okay, so we're not we're gonna stick with the polar we've got. Okay, so we got we got a wind file, we got a polar. Now we just need to put where we want to start and end. So let's just say let me just start here. Let me just put a new mark, and I'm just going to call this uh, point A. And I'm gonna start at point A. Now, for for what we're doing for the very basic stuff here, we'll just leave everything the same. I think everything's going to be okay. If it doesn't work, then we're going to have to come back and worry about that. Now let's go point B, say over here. Okay, I'm going to drop a mark here, and this is point B. Now, and you can look ahead and figure out what I'm going to do. I'm going to go from point A to point B. Um, uh, so I, I've got a sailboat, I've got a Cal 40, and I've got this is my wind field from July. It's a real wind. Um, these reanalyzed data are, in fact, all essentially the real winds. Uh, that's another story. We have an article about that. But um, uh, there, uh, so my Cal 40 is here, and I want to go here, and these are the winds. And we've got the time set to be the first one on the the first grib file of the day. So that's where we're starting, right? Okay. So now I think you just right click anywhere. Yeah, create a routing. And routing is the phrase used for what we're doing here. This, and I'll come back to this in a moment, but there's several similar terms, but this is what we want. So let's give it a name, and well, let's give it an uh, a interesting name, up like a point A to point B, like that. And now I think, oh, ah, look, this we've got to change. Routing from the boat. No, we're not going from the boat. We're going to go from, and we're not. We're going from Ambrose Light Station. We're going from point A to point B. Here's a subtlety too. Um, this doesn't say start and finish. And furthermore, up here it says finish and start. So don't be tempted to reverse that. You're, you're starting on the top one. You're going to the next one. Keep starting date. And that, and I've done this earlier, and I typed in the right date here. 
uh, which is the first one. And then if you put keep, then if you're doing practice, it'll always come back to this date. In real life, when you've got the GPS going into the program and you're navigating and so forth, that's uh, you would want that to do something different. Now here, and this is default, this would say convert to route when doing this. Now, this is a route. What we're computing is a routing, and we want to leave this on. And I'll explain more when we get to this point. Okay, that's it. Okay, we're done. Now, oh, there it goes. It's doing it. And it's calculating the um, isochrones. And we can alternate the steps. Notice what it did. It took finer steps to begin with, thinking that we might be near land or leaving the coast or going in, coming out of a harbor or something. And so it did finer steps to begin with, and then it switched over to bigger steps. And then it thinks we might be going into a tricky place down here, so it takes small steps again. So it says that to get from A to B with that Cal 40 polar that we've got, a little bit off in a sense, but uh, the cal it's going to take uh, six, uh, oh wait, cal oh no, what this is, what is it going to take? Four days and 22 hours, 30 minutes, and, and then it's also telling us, uh, we, we almost know this because he watched it, said it took 25 seconds. Uh, okay, so that's okay. Now this pops up something else here. And, and it's converting the routing to a route. In the QTVLM terminology, a routing is the result you get from doing an isochrone optimum weather routing operation. This, this whole, all the data and this background here is the routing. What we want is an actual route similar to uh, what we call a route in other programs, a sequence of waypoints which they call waypoints or point of interest, no, point, or point of interest, POI, they call them, which are waypoints. So we want to say yes. We want to simplify that uh, to that. And now there's two ways to do it, optimum or maximum. And what it's doing is it, it's, it's, it's computed the optimum place at each point along here. It computed the, oh, here's the actual route down here. Is that right? Yeah. Um, it computed from, from isochrone to isochrone the right way to go, but there's a lot of extra points in that information it has stored right now. If, if you have like three points in a straight line, then you can take out the middle one and you don't lose anything. So that's optimized to take out the middle one. If you say, so that's optimum. If you say maximize it, then that does a little bit finer tuning, a little even better searching for the best route because then it not only, not only throws away ones you don't need, but it reanalyzes the, the, the type of routing it did from point to point in the original optimization. And that, let's just let's say maximum. I don't, and that may uh, take a couple. It may have to run up and down the track a couple times. But that's what it's doing right now, and it's assigning basically waypoints along the route that we could follow. And let's see how long this takes. So oh, that didn't. Uh, that took. Uh, it saved five minutes on the route, and 186 points got reduced. It ended up with 186 points. It started with 201. Okay, so now we're, uh, that's that. Okay, that's close. We're, we've got it. So now we have our route. This is our optimum route here. And we can start seeing what it tells about the route. First of all, before, oh, I didn't stop. I should have stopped and looked up here under routing. And if you said edit a routing, it would have listed point one, point A to point B as that one that was there. And I could have shut that off and then just went about my business and done something else and then come back to it and so forth, hit it. But it's gone because we converted it to a route. So now if I go up here, edit, here's point A to point B. So now I can look at that and see several things. Um, let's see, well, logbook. Let's see, do I have to change anything here? I don't think so. Logbook is just going to go right down those 186 points and show you for every point you know what uh, now we don't again I don't have the details set up here so we didn't look at sales you know what sales to put at what speeds and what ang wind angles and things like that all that can be uh, can be built into the operation and uh, we don't have any current this is CS is actually current speed and current direction 
So, not not set and drift, but I think current speed and current. Anyway, we don't have current. We could have run RTOFs and had currents. And so this just shows us what's there, all these parameters that are there. And um, then what have you got? And we could export this as a CSV file, so you have that record of the route. And then histograms. This is an interesting thing where you can look at the. This is like the true wind speed. Uh, uh, Oh look, we are losing wind during that little route we did. Gradually losing wind, starting out at like 19, bouncing down to really low wind. And then if we want to look at our speed, true wind direction. What's the wind? Wind direction didn't change too much. Uh, we could look at our speed over the ground. Now there's no current, so speed over the ground and speed through the water ought to be the same. And so we gradually slow down a little bit and so forth. Anyway, that's what this does. Then statistics is just a summary of the, um, you know, the, the distance, the time, the average speed, and so forth. Now, again, and I think, let me check my notes over here to see if I want to do anything. Optimize the routing in the menus. Oh, then we can, if we want to then, we can take this route. We can take this route and export it. That would be route. Uh, oh, export route. Okay, export route. We only have one in there. And if you click this, then it will just make a GPX file that you can export and put into, uh, well, chances are if you're using this program, you already have it in your navigation program. Uh, but you would, uh, you could put it into your handheld. You could take this route, let's say I'm going to sail this route, and then just export that and get it into your handheld. You have to learn that technique of how you get the thing into your handheld in the most efficient way. And also, how often you do that is, depends because in a real ocean passage here, you'll be running this route, you'll be running optimizing this route every six hours, if not more often. You get new wind data every six hours, but you, you notice your real wind changes, and if the real wind is not equal to what the model says the wind is then you're going to want to change that wind anyway and there's ways you scale though you take the real wind the model winds and you scale it anyway that's the process uh, this program will do a lot of things but that's the basic way that you do routings I will come back and do another example of, of maybe some inland routings with some uh, regional models uh, uh, later on